I think I started it in about 71 or so. Um, and of course, I could only do it you know, at night and weekends and things. Um, and um, it, it, took a, it took a long, long time. But because I'd always been interested in trying to write decent English and make things clear, I concentrated quite a lot on trying to make it readable as well as scientifically interesting. And um, so I think it does, it did come out as quite readable. It's got about a thousand references, but it's got nearly six, uh, 600 pages, I think. Um, but part, <clears throat> part of that is because I wanted to give some kind of reference that people could look into to see where cholinestrase had been found. And I didn't want to write a great chapter saying um, it's here and it's there and it's everywhere else. So I put it all into tables, and this allowed me to put in a great number of references. So if, if somebody's working um, on the Mongolian shrew or something, you know, they can find it in there. This all really boiled down to um, what I found in the literature, what people had suggested, trying to weigh up one against the other, um, but unless I was pretty sure, um, I didn't want to make too binding a conclusion. And you did find, and I have included in the book because they were um, quite fun, um, you did find some absolutely bizarre theories. And there's one chap, and I can't remember the actual paper, but he s felt that the cholinesterase is varied from season, season to season. And that one, you know, in the spring, acetyl cholinesterase was working, and in the summer, butyl cholinesterases were working. So I did put one or two of things like that in f for fun. Acetyl cholinesterase in the context of transmission, that I had to be very, very careful about because it was at this time when um, the ideas of cholinergic transmission were being developed. And so, again, you had to be very cautious. You had to give both sides of the story as far as possible. Because I was reading fairly widely and you came across quite a lot of conflicting evidence, it was obviously sensible to um, not to put too definite a point on things. I mean, some things were definitely known, they were clear, but some things were still very much up in the air. And so I tried to avoid being absolute about things.